This video is sponsored by NVIDIA. Welcome back everybody to a special hardware tech specific episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take an in-depth look at NVIDIA's upcoming top of the line GPU, the RTX 4090, more specifically its signature DLSS3 technology, and see how it compares in terms of both performance and image quality to the same games running with the features disabled. For this analysis, I'll be showing footage of games using pre-release updates set to feature DLSS3 graphics settings, including Cyberpunk 2077, F122, A Plague Tale Requiem, and Microsoft's Flight Simulator. All these games will be running at their maximum ultra presets, with ray tracing set to its highest value at a 4K resolution. When DLSS on is shown on screen, that will mean that the footage was captured with all of DLSS3's features enabled which include DLSS Super Resolution at its recommended performance preset, DLSS Frame Generation, and NVIDIA Reflex. Whereas, when DLSS Off is shown, that means all three of those previous options will be disabled, and I'll utilize more traditional AA methods like TAA instead. Motion blur options have also been disabled throughout to ensure cleaner still image captures. Though I do want to point out now that most of the footage shown here today will not necessarily be wholly representative of an actual in-person viewing experience. This is because DLSS 3's main benefit is achieving frame rates that far exceed what traditional capture cards are capable of recording. To circumvent this, I captured footage separately using OBS at 120 frames per second. I then analyzed those frames in a separate app than what I would typically use for these comparisons. So while my talking points here will be based on the actual raw presentation of DLSS3 running on a 144Hz 4K screen, the footage I've provided is intended to be more supplemental. Also, I'd like to thank NVIDIA for not only sponsoring this video, but for providing me with an RTX 4090 Founders Edition GPU to try out. If you'd like to learn more about this GPU and current availability, I provided all the necessary links in the description below. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first discussing what exactly DLSS is. DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, is an NVIDIA-specific image upscale and enhancement technology that was first introduced alongside the first line of RTX graphics cards back in 2019. In its earliest form, DLSS relied on taking a single frame from a game and then upscaling it to a higher resolution output via a neural AI network. The downside to this is something that I've frequently mentioned in past direct comparison videos, where you end up with this really blurry looking presentation that doesn't quite match the quality of the game with DLSS disabled, despite of course having significantly improved the performance averages. After this, we had DLSS 2, which greatly resolved the downsides of the first iteration by incorporating temporal feedback and motion vectors to better resolve those single frames, providing both the performance benefit and visuals that are similar or sometimes even superior to the native non-DLSS image. But this too suffered from some issues, mainly small artifacting associated with smaller moving objects in the distance like birds flying against the sky. DLSS 3 takes this all a step further by using a new technique called optical flow frame generation. With this technique, games using DLSS 3 will take the data from two partially reconstructed traditional frames and generate an entirely new AI-based frame in between them, using motion vectors from the game and the GPU's new 4th gen Tensor Core and Optical Flow Accelerator. This allows for some ridiculously high frame rates in just about every game that I tested, all with little to no visual compromise. And as you can see, gameplay and animation shown on screen are much smoother as a result. In other words, DLSS 3 is creating new frames and games, effectively doubling performance with a negligible impact to image quality. And with NVIDIA Reflex thrown in on top, players using these new 4000 series GPUs can greatly minimize input latency and enjoy a buttery smooth gameplay experience. For the most part, this has been my experience with DLSS 3 so far. The performance benefits are incredible, with some games more than doubling their frame rates, making high-end 4K 120fps gaming with ray tracing enabled an actual feasible option for once. As with previous iterations, DLSS 3 can encounter a few minor hiccups here and there, but these are typically hard to spot in-game, and the incredible frame rates that I was able to achieve in some of the most demanding titles demonstrates just how much of a massive game changer that these new features really are. 
So now, let's take a look at a few examples, starting with CD Projekt Red's dystopian open world of Cyberpunk 2077. Beginning with the game's built-in benchmark tool, the difference in performance is absolutely gigantic here. This bar scene, rendered traditionally with DLSS disabled at a native 4K resolution, can only manage an average of around 30 FPS, which, even without the frame rate overlay in the top right corner, is pretty apparent when stacked up to the much smoother image here on the right. With DLSS 3 enabled, I was able to achieve frame rates at a near minimum of 100 FPS, with the only drops being attributed to the occasional stutter from extraneous factors, likely other weaker components in my build. As for the image quality, I was also very impressed with just how well the AI frame generation managed all throughout. The presentation looks nearly identical between both versions, with none of that obvious blurriness I'm so used to seeing with earlier DLSS titles. Artifacting is also extremely minor, save for a few very small instances that I was only able to identify after going back and combing through the footage using a separate frame comparison program. These artifacts will vary from things like uneven lines and aliasing along light fixtures, to other smaller details like strange abnormalities around moving objects in the scene. But because these frames are interspersed between normal traditional frames, you likely won't notice these when playing through the world of Cyberpunk. I tested several different scenarios with the DLSS 3 tech enabled, and was constantly blown away by just how smooth the gameplay was, especially with combat and more intensive action sequences that would have otherwise been a stuttery, frustrating mess. DLSS 2 was similarly a requirement for Cyberpunk 2077 in the past, as the 3090 would struggle to handle incredibly dense environments without it. But the performance gains here are substantially greater overall, with nearly a 4 times increase in average frame rates, along with a decently reduced input latency as well. Next, let's check out the most recent entry to the F1 series, F122. Now, F122 already offers a pretty decent gameplay experience, even without DLSS enabled. As always, the visuals are excellent, and the simulation experience on offer is probably one of the best in the series to date. But for users on newer 4K panels, capable of outputting upwards of 120 to 144 FPS, DLSS 3 now offers a chance to fully seize the advantage that these monitors offer, with frame rates reaching as high as 200 FPS. Whereas playing with identical conditions with DLSS 3 features disabled results in a much lower average of 60 to 70 FPS instead. Again, it's still great performance, but not even close to the performance boost DLSS 3 can afford. As for the visuals, the presentation is more or less the same between the two capture sessions, with the same level of clarity that my recording device could muster. Though in this case, artifacting was even less prevalent than in Cyberpunk, and only really reared its head when swapping between cameras very quickly, likely the result of the AI trying to keep up with the unpredictable image changes. There's also a tiny bit of ghosting near the base of the tires when playing with the chase camera enabled. But even then, the effect is so quick that your brain barely has time to really process this change, and so the artifacting only really becomes apparent when we really stop and analyze frame by frame like this. Following F1, I decided to check out the upcoming story-driven adventure game, A Plague Tale Requiem, which is set to release on October 18th. Once again, the performance gains with DLSS 3 are absolutely huge. Performance with DLSS disabled in this title results in some already decent frame rates, around 70 to 77 FPS. But when DLSS 3 super resolution, frame generation, and NVIDIA reflex are all enabled, suddenly the frame rate in the same scene jumps up by an insane 100 to 170 FPS, far exceeding the target 144 FPS afforded by my own monitor. Artifacting can occur in this game as well, sometimes around distant character models moving quickly, but it's extremely subtle and almost indistinguishable, and I never once noticed it when actually capturing the footage. Finally, I wanted to wrap up with Microsoft's Flight Simulator, a game that basically brought my old 3090 to its knees back when I first reviewed it. When running the 4090 with its DLSS 3 options disabled, Flight Simulator runs at an average of 50 FPS, which is still a solid improvement over the 25 to 30 FPS I was seeing before. Though, this is to be expected as Flight Simulator is an extremely CPU bound title, and I am being bottlenecked slightly with my older i9 10900K. But with DLSS 3 fully enabled, 
Flight Simulator's average FPS leaps to an impressive 115, all without any of the annoying stuttering or other problems that I'm so used to experiencing in this particular title. This effectively proves that DLSS 3 can overcome CPU-bound scenarios, as the GPU creating those additional frames doesn't involve the CPU. And because of the game's generally slower speed relative to the image on the screen, I experienced absolutely no sign of any artifacting, blurriness, or any of the other downsides commonly attributed to DLSS. Overall, DLSS 3 has so far proven to be a gigantic improvement over past iterations of DLSS. Today, we looked at some of the most demanding titles available on the PC, all running at 4K Ultra with the extremely intensive ray tracing features enabled, and yet we still manage frame rates in the 100 to 200 FPS range. This is probably one of the single largest leaps in performance that I've ever seen with a new video card, far and beyond what I realistically expected. And what's more, a lot of my previous concerns regarding artifacting and ghosting appears to have been resolved. Sure, there's still a few artifacting issues here and there, but these issues were exceptionally rare and only noticeable when looking very closely at captured footage. In action, DLSS 3 has completely transformed all these gameplay experiences making things like firefights, races, and other vivid action finally appear smooth on my high refresh rate display, and I'm really looking forward to more titles supporting this feature in the future. But what do you guys think? Are you impressed with NVIDIA's DLSS 3 technology, or do you feel we still have a little bit to go before the technology can be fully fleshed out? Let me know in the comments section. Also, I'd like to once again thank NVIDIA for sponsoring this video and sending over the new RTX 4090 for me to play around with. If you're finally ready to upgrade your GPU and are interested in installing this monster into your rig, you can find the links listed below with availability information. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this posted every week.